Ooh, welcome to That's Good Broncos. I'm Brandon Perna, and if you're a Cardinals fan, I just want to say this before I make fun of your team. I still hope you guys win your division. I don't like the 49ers, and unless I'm dead and reincarnated as the mayor of Seattle, I'll never be able to pull for those disgusting birds again. With that said, when you play a big dick team, you must suffer the big dick consequences. Like this Vaughn Miller hit on Drew Stanton. That looked like it hurt Stanton. Also, spoiler alert, this episode's thesis is titled 500, 501, 502, and 503 touchdowns. John Fox and the Denver Broncos defeated the Arizona Arians, excuse me, Bruce Arians and the Arizona Cardinals 41 to 20. The day started off exactly how we all thought it would start off, with Peyton Manning throwing his 500th NFL touchdown. Thomas appeared to be covered, but Manning said coverage doesn't exist when I'm fucking quarterback. He was right. After the game, Manning was asked, how did throwing your 500th touchdown feel? He responded by saying, it feels as good as coming in 21 public places. Isn't that how many Papa John's he owns? What am I saying then? Manning's longtime offensive coordinator also looked excited when Manning scored his 500th touchdown. Well, you can't really see it in Tom Moore's face, but right there, his heart is saying, attaboy, Peyton, attaboy. The Cardinals also burned all three of their timeouts in the first quarter. It's hard to respect a team that doesn't respect time. Some analysts like offense, some analysts like defense. I like fucking clock managers. Despite Manning's godlike numbers on the day, he did throw two picks. The first coming here on an underthrown ball to Wes Welker. Peyton, my only critique here is if a defender has the last name that is indicative of the very thing superheroes possess, don't throw in his fucking direction. Von Miller saved Manning's ass after that interception by getting this sack on Drew Stanton. In the third quarter, Von Miller got another hit on Drew. I'm not Stanton up anymore, Stanton. Um, that joke was funny until I found out Drew Stanton received a concussion on that play. Now, that joke is hilarious because Von Miller gave Drew Stanton a concussion by hitting him in the armpit. Explain to me how this is even scientifically possible, guys. My brain started pumping blood to my groin on this 30-yard pass to Emmanuel Sanders, which appeared to turn into a miraculous touchdown. But just like the theme in the movie Miracle on 34th Street suggests, Miracles don't fucking happen in real life because Sanders' knee was still on the ground when the defender touched him. Had Sanders been thinking like a Manning, he would have stepped out of bounds at the one yard line, not scoring. If he did this, the play wouldn't have been automatically reviewed and the Cardinals, who burnt up all three of their timeouts, would not have been able to challenge the play. Thanks for pointing that out to me on Twitter, Paul. Nopeke? Nopeke? Nope key. That completion to Sanders did set up this 31 yard touchdown pass run in by Demarius Thomas. This play reminded me a lot of last season. It also reminded me of my ultimate fantasy, jumping into a crowd of women who pour beer on me in slow motion while a leprechaun watches me have my way with them. My, well, my two favorite movies growing up were Leprechaun and Showgirls. So it really shaped my deep, dark perversions. Manning was then picked for a second time by Calias Campbell on this screenplay. Now Campbell made a hell of a play to make that pick. That interception almost impressed me as much as Peyton Manning's touchdown saving tackle, which is the second he's had in the last two years. The cards scored or something after that play, but who cares because Demarius Thomas said it's 86 yard touchdown time, which means he's going to score an 86 yard touchdown. It was so good that Peyton Manning gave Thomas an extended French helmet kiss. Football players do hard, wet helmet kisses all the time to show you exactly how manly they are. When it gets a little wet. See, Aikman knows, and it's too bad nobody believed me about this fact in the high school locker room. <laughs> 
third quarter started out choppy. You'll love that pun in a second, as this 77-yard Demarius Thomas touchdown was called back due to a Ryan Clady chop block. Bruce Arian said it was the dirtiest play he's seen in 37 NFL years. Well, apparently Bruce didn't see a single Raiders game in the 80s. Also, I'm pretty sure this play was legal, as Campbell was not yet engaged in the block when Thomas hit him. Is it weird that I know more about NFL rules than a head coach? No, because I'm a fucking genius. Brandon McManus briefly made me feel okay that we let go of Matt Prater when he made his first field goal attempt, splitting the uprights on this 44-yard boot. But then he missed from 53 yards and bounced this one. Coming off his first miss. In off of the uprights, putting the fear back into my belly that letting go of Matt Prater was a big, big, big mistake. And I'd officially like to welcome Logan Thomas to the NFL via DeMarcus Ware, who sacked his rookie noob ass here. Did you learn your lesson, Logan? No, because Malik Jackson and Von Miller got in the action and sacked you again on the next play. Hey, Logan, do you remember getting sacked twice? Do you remember when that happened to you in the game? If you do, please tell me on Twitter that you remembered that happening to you. <laughs> If you don't already believe that Peyton Manning knows everything, just listen to this. Right before he tosses Julius Thomas a touchdown, he tells Jawan Thompson to watch the end. Sure enough, guess who's coming in? The end. Thompson picks up the pass rusher and Manning floats the perfect ball to Julius Thomas to give the Broncos a 14 point lead in the fourth quarter, giving Manning four touchdowns on the day, which was enough for him to say, go ahead Jawan Thompson. Run one in. I've got 503. I guess you can have your first touchdown, little baby boy. Thompson took it in, helping the Broncos put the nail on the cross, as they say, to complete the crucifixion of the Arizona Cardinals. The Thomas and Manning show was impressive, but my favorite part of the game was when Troy Aikman called Brock Osweiler. Osweiler is like the new Jim Sorge. <laughs> Jim Sorge. In case you're wondering, Brock, that means you'll never play a meaningful down of football again, and everyone on Earth, including your family and friends, will forget about you. Nice burn, Aikman. Arizona fans, you still have a good team. The game ended when Drew Stanton got hurt. Your whole team is banged up, and you still competed for three quarters against the best team on Earth. And you beat yourselves. I believe you guys dropped seven or eight passes in the game. John Brown dropped a pass. Andre Ellington dropped a pass. Arizona fans, you still have Larry Fitzgerald, who stiff-armed the fuck out of one Bradley Roby. And if you were all very patient in Arizona, you may just get that big new fence on the border you've been pushing so hard for one day. Who knows? Maybe even Tom Sawyer will come down and whitewash it for you. You'll have a whitewashed border fence and a completely whitewashed state. Go, cards. Now, you need to click here to see who will win the Big Dick Player Award for the week. Trust me, watching the Big Dick Week 5 episode is worth your time. In fact, it's better than this piece of shit episode you just sat through. Thanks for watching That's Good Broncos, and make sure to subscribe to my channel, That's Good Sports. Uh, it's a good channel to subscribe to, and it's free.